Hello. Do we got volume? It would appear so. Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to uh, the Doom Trooper stream. Today we are going to be uh, talking about the tutorial. Lights. You good? Okay. Wow, look at my hair. It's very poofy. Oh. It wasn't that way last night when I, I put styling product in it. I brushed it. That's the problem. People with curly hair, like I guess you can't brush your hair. You have to like comb it or something. I don't know. I have straight hair. I don't. But I can't. Oh no, the orange beanie again. <laughs> hey Tomek. Uh, in personal news, we got our first vaccine shots yesterday. Oh, we're just tucking the hair in entirely now. <laughs> we're just done with it. Okay. Uh, we got our first shots of the Moderna vaccine yesterday. Um, I mean, I didn't expect any symptoms. You don't with the first uh, shot. But when they said sore arm, they weren't kidding. My arm is really sore. Um, more so than I think with any other vaccine I've ever gotten. But still happy to and thankful to have gotten the vaccine you awake no we didn't get any water <gasps> let me grab my water uh-huh is it gonna be liquid death it's the julie show great thanks for for leaving me here all alone um, anyway, so uh, right now I am starting to uh, I just opened a word doc and a spreadsheet um, to kind of start some type of formal documentation on what we want to put in the new tutorial. We've talked about it a lot, um, but what actually start getting things down on paper. Um, there's so much, right, that you need to teach somebody to play Doom Trooper. Um, I think any card game kind of has a big learning curve. I mean, every single card has like a different ability and a paragraph of text on it. Like, where do you even begin? Um, I will tell you that people don't like tutorials. They certainly have always loved to skip ours when we've uh, demoed in person. Um, so many people are just like, I know what I'm doing, click, 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 click. And then they're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, it was always very easy to tell when people skip the tutorial in, in real life. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is that people want to fill the board up. Like in other CCGs, they, they immediately will pull every single warrior out that they can and then just give their opponent, like, points to winning. You know, because they've just put out, like, tons of, like, ones and two level, like, warriors. Um... So, and then, you know, things like War Medic, and how do you use that, and what's an interrupt, and when do you use an interrupt card? Uh, there's a lot to go over, so we're going to talk about that today. Um, I love how she's got a whole plan that I'm not privy to. I mean, we talked about this last Saturday, uh, Sunday when I said, like, yo, we're going to be doing it. I skipped the tutorial. Shame on me. Yes. But you know what? At least you, I assume I'm, I'm, that you already knew how to play Doom Trooper. So in this scenario, you didn't need to. But, uh, no, it's really funny uh, when we when we used to go to conventions. Um, hey, we got the vaccine. We're coming back. Most men, most adult men skip right over that uh thank you for following smarmella torex some smar i missed it nope don't even try you're gonna you'll hurt yourself on that one no it's easy it's smarmella torex okay okay <laughs> um most adult men would skip the tutorial and it, like i said it was really funny because you could uh you know, we try, it's so awkward because, like, you know people are going to need help, but you're trying not to, like, hover over them while they're demoing your game. Um, and, but then you could tell. I could tell. We would we would whisper to each other. I'd be like, hey, Chris, I'd be like, they skipped it. Because they, we would know that if they skipped it, 
you know, we're trying to give people a positive experience, right? Like, ideally, they win because nobody really wants to lose, right? Some people would take it as a challenge. Some people, they're like, oh, I lost, you know, and they'll try again. But ultimately, we're trying to get people, like, to win because we want them to, like, you know, like I said, have a positive experience with the game. And most adult men would skip the tutorial. Um, children don't. And women never skip the tutorial. Um, true, it's not my bias or anything either. That is that is what happened. Uh, so, um, yeah, all right. So you've had a channel going for a little while with some folks to talk about the tutorial. See, now I'm putting you on the spot. You're gonna be like, I don't know, I'm too busy, Julia. I don't know. I was gonna say like, what are some things that have been going on that you guys have talked about? Uh, it's just funny. I'm because I, I know you're like I don't know. She's like completely silent before we start the stream and doesn't like say anything. And then as soon as we start, she's like, and now I am a radio host. I'm a professional. I'm exhausted, but I know <laughs> when we we start this. Yeah. So, oh, uh, our Italian friend. Uh, he says he's played the tutorial, but it's too easy. Yeah, it's... Somebody's just doing stuff in the trash can. What? What? The dumpster. S sounds like they're dumping our dumpster uh, on the floor. So we're not just... And correct me if I'm wrong. So we do want to have an official, like, tutorial, but then don't we also want there to be a level of, like, gameplay where... Are you practicing Salt Bay? Okay. So we're not just talking about a tutorial. We're talking about a couple of, like, levels that they would play to teach them, right? I know you and I talked about that in the past. Well, there's the tutorial, which would probably be three short matches. The idea being that the first one would be like, this is Doom Trooper. Okay, I'm going to write this down. Hold on. Okay, so three short matches okay so the first one would basically be like this is doom trooper you need to understand what a warrior is what a support card is etc like the basics then you need to know how to play a warrior and why it's important to only play a few warriors um how to make them stronger and how to attack your opponents so how to use attachments basically how to how to how to use all card types how do you okay the basics of all card types um the thing is, is like after you do that though, so it would be really hard. That's a lot of info right there. It would be really hard to teach somebody all of Doom Trooper in one fight. Um, so the answer, in my opinion, is not to do one fight. Um, but then there's another problem: is if after you teach them the beginnings, you say, "Okay, now win the match," then they're going to be there for 20 more minutes trying to blindly figure out how to win the match, and they're going to filling get bored. their board up with warriors. Right. So the idea is that we, if we drop them into the tutorial, and maybe it's like turn six already, and the opponent already has guys up on the board, and the cards in your hand are very specific, and it's like, okay, you need to play a warrior. Now you need to give him this armor. Which is what we, we do that in the current tutorial for sure. Well, we don't because it starts at turn one, and it builds well, up as it goes. I, I meant the part about telling them. Right. So you have to imagine the first thing you see in the tutorial is maybe a Razide on the other side of the board and like two undead legionnaires or something where it like looks kind of scary to a new player. But then the dialogue is like, okay, really quickly, you got to play this guy, you got to give him this armor, you got to give him this attachment, then you got to play the support guy that will buff so him much. and now he's powerful I think enough. I think the support, that's too much already. Well, if Adding you don't. Adding a support card. If you don't then they're just going to fill the board up. You have to teach them to have their main guy and their support guys and play off a small squad. Oof. And How do you show that? Uh, teach them to play with a small squad uh, as opposed to filling up the board. So basically you, you drop them into a scary situation that's like already in combat and then you guide them very specifically how to put two guys and a couple support cards out and it gives them enough power to defeat the the board and then as soon as that happens 
dialogue comes back in and it's like, thanks, right. Trooper, you did great. And then it fades out and it gives you rewards. So you're only in there for less than 10 minutes, you know, depending on how fast you go. What's going on, Julie? I just can't read the comments. I'm just, we're good, we're good. Yeah, but the microphone. I know, we're good. The main part missing in the tutorial is the combat interactions with fate cards. So then I imagine there would be a second uh, tutorial, which would be very similar. So we don't, we'll see, we say second level, maybe. Okay. Okay. So it drops you into another battle, and in this case, it's already set up for you. You already have guys out there, you have guys out. So it's in the middle of it, okay. And uh, so we'll say... It's going to be a type of match that you can't win unless you play interrupt cards. So maybe, um, I, can, I don't know for sure how it will work, but maybe the opponent plays something like uh, positive karma that is going to give him enough to activate an ability or to play a big warrior. And then you are instructed to drag miscommunication to the center so that you block. You need to stop them. <laughs> basically, yeah. You need to stop him quick. Uh, whenever an opponent plays a card, you get the opportunity to react. And then it would pause the timer and it would allow you to drag the interrupt card. And then again during combat, you get attacked and you don't have enough uh, shoot, let's say, to wound the opponent. But if you play artillery support, you do. So it'll teach you that you can surprise your opponent by playing cards during combat to switch things up. Um, and then basically, as soon as you play these two interrupts during combat, you kill the Razide. And then the dialogue comes in and it's like, you know, Great job, um, you know, you, you understand interrupts. And then there's been some controversy, but my plan was to have a third level Okay. that is pretty much a full game. Full uh, game, okay. Yeah, but a little bit of story put into it. Warrior and cover. It's a good one. We didn't talk about medic either. Yeah, warrior and cover is a good one. Can we... Can we go through our... Can we show our, our tutorial real fast? Well, I feel like we should have done that in the beginning to review yeah, the, what we already have. This tutorial is, is erased. This has this tutorial has nothing to do with the I realize tutorial. that, but I'm just saying there's a, couple of good, there's a couple of good nuggets in the current tutorial. Julie wants to show the tutorial. If you guys haven't seen this, there's a nice little message now letting people know that there's a new tutorial coming and that they should join Discord. Whoa. Yeah, it's... What was that? Some of the old code and the new code fights at the beginning because the dialogue triggers before the versus screen is okay. done. Basically, everything's too fast now. I need to I need to stop making everything so good. Damn. Um. <coughs> All right. Here's some basics. Oh, right. Well, I mean, we got to talk about this stuff. We got to right. show... Well, this stuff will still be in the first step. Well, we have to document that okay so we need to show them three actions per turn uh where is destiny amount of turns all right destiny promotion what is destiny amount of turns Promotion points. Meditate is on here. Oh, right. Meditate. Okay. Solofin says you should tell them that they can discard one card per turn. And the support zone isn't explained. Wait, the support zone? Well, you, already, you already said what's a support card. Oh, oh okay, okay. Um, um, but I didn't say anything about discarding once per turn. Yeah. So all the basic stuff from here and the stuff that you guys are saying, I think would be part of the first step. Um, it'd be nice to show somebody with like a full hand uh, and they're gonna lose. Like they don't have the card that they need to survive. Uh, so the game instruct, the tutorial would instruct them to discard one card and then the next turn they would draw the card that they needed to win the, the puzzle, basically. Yeah, there's a lot. Cover, uh, cover is not explained at all. Discard is not explained. Yeah. All right, so. We have a warrior, so it sets you up, gives yeah. you the warrior, you 
cannot do shit except so you have focus to on Shogun. Now you you have enough to play your warrior, drag him out because you have to even teach people how to like drag shit. Like like when you watch a new person play it in real life, it's it really kind of. I don't want to say baffles you, but you really learn a lot because you're like, one oh, thing, wow. One thing I'm considering is like when it just, imagine this was back a step where it says uh, drag the Shogun to the uh, to the squad. I'm thinking about putting a box up above the dialogue and to the left uh, that is an animated GIF that shows the mouse dragging the guy up and releasing, drag the guy, and just repeats. So as soon as you click to get rid of the dialogue, it goes away. But while Sean is talking, or whoever we choose to use, uh, it'll actually show you how to drag. And then it would be the same thing for discard, and the same thing for cover, uh, which would make that makes a sense. lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Rez, I don't know if you're aware, but I actually just changed that. Uh, he says how to use equipment like first aid kit as an explain. Right. That is the biggest nightmare of de developing Doom Trooper is... Um, attachments and, and the UI. Because in the real game, it's easy. You just have it behind the card and you say like, oh, I'm going to activate this card. But in UI, it can be... I mean, we had to cut it, but in theory, you can have a gun attached to a guy and then an attachment attached to the gun and then a fate card or special card attached to the attachment that's attached to the gun that's attached to the warrior. So you would have to go nested, nested, nested. And uh, we may had to make that decision early on that you can't have attachments to attachments. It's, you have a warrior, warriors have attachments, and stuff like um, chain bayonet, instead of attaching to a, uh, a gun, instead it attaches to a warrior who has to have a gun. So it, it works the same, but we had to make a subtle change there. Uh, but yeah, the first aid kit has actually been changed. I added the ability to click to activate to a bunch of the complicated cards, and if people report more that needed, I'm gonna add it over time. Uh, so you no longer have to drag the first aid kit to the target. It now says click to activate. And when you click it, it'll pop up a window to select who you want. And I think we'll get a lot less complaints with that UI. It's not the final UI that I want, but it's like the halfway point between what I want and where we are. And it should solve people's problems. Um, but yeah, so the tutorial says you have one action remaining. And it tells you how if you end your turn, it'll auto meditate any remaining destiny for you. <coughs> OK. So you want to put that on there? Well, I mean, I have meditate. It's yeah, we'll we have, we're gonna have to flush this out like a lot. Press enter. End turn auto meditate is important. <sighs> okay. Otherwise, people sit here and they meditate a bunch of times. Like it needs to be in there. I know, but at least to we fake. should also write better dialogue. I wrote <laughs> so some people. I'm gonna kill you. I don't just... know if you guys know this, but the this tutorial was promised for like three different conventions because we knew we needed a tutorial to teach people how to play because we spent so much time repeating ourselves. Uh, and then did. one of the RTXs like a year and a half ago in Texas, we, or I, stayed up till two, 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 morning, two or three or in the morning writing the first tutorial and coding it into the game, just forcing it in there. Which is not something you want to be doing at a convention because the days are long. There's but I got it in, and it worked, so and uh, it was amazing. And then about a year later, I because it used to actually be coded into the game. So if you looked at the rules of the game, it would say code like, uh, if is tutorial, do this, else do normal stuff. And it was really hacky. So over the course of like a year after that, I converted it to be uh, a what's called an, an event. So an event is basically um, a Doom Trooper match that has custom rules, custom dialogue, uh, custom cards, and custom features, like the glowing. And you define it all in one file. You say, this is an event. And then you just load the event and players play it. Uh, there are actually two events in the game right now. There's the tutorial, and there's the 2018 Halloween event, which was super primitive. It didn't really have much. Uh, but it allows me to say, like, you're going to use this deck. And it doesn't even have to be cards you own. It can be any cards. And I can put dialogue in and stuff. Um, so soon, maybe as early as next month or so, uh, we'll start having events every month that will happen probably on the weekends. So maybe every Saturday there'll be a, a special event that you can log in and play and you'll get special rewards and that kind of thing. <coughs> That's the plan at least. Okay, so he threatens to kill you. Yeah. But that doesn't explain that you have to click accept. Like, this is where people No, that I would very much have to go, okay, click accept and tell people that. Yeah. Maybe we, but I feel like a, 
an arrow, a pulsating, anything could solve that. Well, I think the animated gift thing will help. It'll okay. show it. It'll show you dragging a card up there to play. Okay. It. Um, All right. So I now... think the first time that he plays a warrior, you should have a card in your hand to respond. That way, you immediately understand that window. Okay. Um. Let's see. Also, bear with me one sec because this never works. Uh, Chrome browser. Do, 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 do. Um, are we saying? So, oh. FYI, these. Oops. That should look better. These are the um, characters that we've created for the dialogue. So everyone's on a yeah. We have a whole bunch of PNG background. You can nice. imagine, like you know, I, I've been playing with this version of Sean a little bit. I did a dialogue with uh, Cardinal Dominic, uh, so he can come in and talk. And I think we use this one. No, no, we use the trencher. Where's the trencher? This one. This is actually in the game now. When you first started. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes in and he tells you about the pack system and gives you your first reset token. So uh, we're going to be using a lot of these in the future for the single-player campaign and events and stuff. And there's probably more that we'll cut out as we find them in the documents and the files that we have. So, sorry, uh, we said the first turn should show you how to interact with... Um, are we using interrupts? or? I don't know about the first turn, but... Rez says each step must be paused and explained, in my opinion. Right. The one thing that the tutorial doesn't do now is force you to do actions. Like right now, I think he suggested that we play Weapon Link or Factory, right? But it doesn't matter. I can play, like, yeah. I can play Scalper and first. And people would. Yeah. And then they would be like, huh? Because then the cards available don't match up with right. the words on the screen. People who wouldn't read. Because they don't. Click, 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 click. Uh, the, ca the tutorial should use capital against Algaroth since you get a starter deck for them. So that's not permanent, though. Um, the, the design that I'm working towards, which starts with the tutorial, is that completing the tutorial gives you uh, a base set, like uh, general cards and some cartel cards and maybe oh, some, right. some Algaroth cards, like a, a small set of cards that you're gonna probably use in a lot of your early decks. And then you get to choose um, one, this is where it gets a little weird. You're, you can choose one faction and we'll give you a starter deck for that faction. And then all of the other factions are, um, well, that's pretty much the whole tutorial. Uh, all of the other factions will be here under faction wars and there will be a short battle that you can do for every faction and you'll earn the other starter decks. So you'll get seven starter decks to start the game. Um, I mean, honestly, I, uh, I don't know if Thorgal's here, but he's been helping me with the design and most of them are gonna be this, it's like 40 of the same cards. It's just basically, you have a couple, um, you have like your core set of basic commons and uncommons and then we sprinkle some faction cards on top of it. So. They'll be very similar decks. Oh, but, hi, Thorgal. But they'll be one of every faction, so well, that you'll be able to try it. You're right on time, Thorgal. <laughs> We're talking about uh, reshaping the new tutorial, and Justin just mentioned your name. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so I was saying how Thorgal will have decks designed that are pretty much the same seven decks, except they'll be different factions. Right. And you'll be able to earn those through faction wars. Uh... You know, what I could do, too, f for the time being to solve the new player dilemma is I could al just allow people to go into Faction Wars and click the one they want and just get it. So you could just get all seven starter decks just by going in here. Um, and then when I want you to test Faction Wars, I could, in theory, like, force a reset or something. We could do a test of that kind of stuff. Or I could ask people to do an optional reset and test for me and give feedback and then reward them somehow with some extra packs. All right, so. Yeah, Rez, that's, that should be online. Um, really, Ooh. it's like a snowball, like most, most things with code. Once we get the new tutorial in, then the event system will be a little more tightened up. You know, the screws and the bolts will all be a lot tighter. And then we just have to go through and design the dialogue for the other seven, uh, which will go a lot quicker because it's just 
writing, basically, and, and designing. So wait, was that the really the rest of the tutorial? It shows you how to add attachments. It has basically, and then it says now win. That's it. It just ends after you. I forget. It's mm -hmm. been a minute. Yeah, okay. basically. All right. It, it has you play Tatsu because he buffs up all right. the other shoguns, and then uh, it says now you have Slayer. So. So. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. All right. So I think there's a lot to to improve on. All right. Well, I've started. <laughs> I've started a, a word doc. Feel like there's so much more to write down a lot of my uh i don't want to say problems with my husband when it comes to doom trooper is that he's so busy stop so hold on let me finish he's really busy. <laughs> he's so busy and like we'll be in the car and we'll be like driving somewhere and he'll like tell me like this whole plan for the tutorial and like all of this stuff and i go hey so is that like documented anywhere and he just goes no and i'm like and he's like, I don't have time. I don't have time to write it down. And I'm like, I know you don't, baby. Let, let, she's she's not, not wrong. She's not wrong. But if I'm the only person working on it, then why should I document it? I know. I Like, just so I can reread it? No. Because then you want to, like, share this with other people. And um, there is no uh, documentation to say that it's going to be multiple levels. Smarm. I, I got it. I lost it. Sm oh, Smarmelatorex. <laughs> See, I told you earlier that you were going to hurt it. yourself on this one. I lost one. it. He says, uh, they say, they. <laughs> I think better one general tutorial and then one tutorial for every single faction. Uh, that's basically the plan, yeah, is the, um, the general tutorial teaches you everything you need to know. And then stuff like cybernetic augments would be taught during the cybernetic faction war. Uh, to get you into the the mood. The mood to kill. And I do pseudo document it. Like I have I have a notebook that has you know tons of notes. Really in it. small writing in it. Write it down, she says. Now your writing's too small, she says. Shut up. You see what married life is like. Shut up. <clears throat> you do have uh, an uncanny ability though to write very small. That's true. Like um, tiny. Also, I was going to mention real quick, there's been some a lot of, of uh, small updates over the last couple days. Uh, as, you know, as you guys might know, first off, I should apologize to anybody who actively plays Doom Trooper that the last week was one of the roughest. Uh, I, I took some time... Hey, too I, mad. I took some time to clean up some bad code, basically. Like, there's a lot of... You could imagine... A metaphor for the code there's a lot of places that just like bubble gum and duct tape and then you like you know you the, the the game is a house and you built it and there are parts of the house that are bubble gum and duct tape and you lean on that wall and you're like yep seems to work and then you just don't touch it but for all you know that bubble gum and duct tape is decaying and decaying and decaying and then the whole thing comes crashing down so I took some time to clean up a very important part of the code which is cards Obviously, Doom Trooper is cards. The engine I made is for cards. So now the database is set up properly for, to store the card data. And the API that feeds it down to the game is set up to validate and give, making sure that it always gives the same like names of all of the parts of a card, which I know probably sounds weird, but things weren't consistent. And then the game itself uses the same code to render the picture of a card everywhere in the game now. Um, and some things went wrong. Oh. So we uh, fixed that stuff, and my apologies for the game. For uh, a morning, didn't allow people to log in, and for a morning, it didn't uh, give a rewards for missions. Just domino effects of removing that bubble gum and duct tape. Uh, but we seem to be past that, which is good. But there was, let's see, I'm looking at my client list. There was a w weird edge case where you could crash the game while opening packs. Uh, I fixed that. I don't know if anyone ever saw that. Uh, deck duplication had an issue where you couldn't duplicate a deck. I fixed that. Um, the deck list was reporting invalid cards incorrectly, especially with undead legionnaires. Uh, so I fixed that. And on the server... Uh, there was some error stuff. I don't think anything that really bothers you guys, but I fixed a bug. It's not really a bug, but we have thousands of players who maybe logged in back in the alpha for like one day and never played again. And during the alpha, you got 10 of every card. So you basically have wow. like 3,000, yeah, like three or 4,000 cards uh, in the database for those users who may never play again. 
And if we have thousands of those users with thousands of cards, it makes our database huge. So I, I did some code that will flag those players. Uh, it flags them as a dead tester, which is a little morbid, but uh, I couldn't come up with anything better. And it erases all their cards. I don't know. This game has a lot of morbid elements in it. It's fitting. Yeah. So anyone who hasn't logged in after December 1st is getting all of their cards erased, which sounds scary. But as you know, December 1st, we did a reset. So if they were to log in, it would erase their cards anyway. But it's waiting for them to log in to erase it. So it's just taking up space. Uh, but also flagging them as a dead tester will allow Julie to write like a custom email for them and we can target them for marketing and be like, hey, you should come back to Doom Trooper. Here's three free packs or here's a, a variant card or whatever we want to try to um, entice them to come try again with all the new features. So that's kind of fun. And I fixed bugs with Razide, Expedite Request, Lamb for the Slaughter, Scrap Heap, War Medic, Cybercurity MP and Nazgroth. I guess some of them could actually be dead in real life. Sure. <laughs> um, I hope not. I actually know of one player. Some of you, I'm not going to name them, but um, <laughs> some of you might might have played with them. Uh, trying to use my pronouns carefully, I, I, I might as well say he. Uh, Ninety-five percent of our players are men, uh, but he uh, had uh, terminal cancer, and may not be with us anymore uh it's really sad but i haven't I, I have to check when when his last login was but it is entirely possible that some of our players are dead and that's a really weird thing to i mean it is life but yeah, yeah that is creepy um oh, yeah so nazgaroth the, the ones that are relevant to you guys nazgaroth uh shouldn't reload if it moves like it was or if combat is canceled it shouldn't lose its uh shot the uh cybercurity mp if you use his ability on a bannerman or somebody else with single life, it wasn't killing him. It was uh, not doing anything, which was bad. So I fixed that bug. Uh, War Medic was actually checking if you had a tactical action, even though it wasn't taking it away when you activated him. So I fixed that. Uh, Scrap Heap was giving you points for discarded cards, so I, I stopped that. Um, I, Razide was creating Razide Remains if he was annihilated, and that's not right, so I curb that. Expedite Request would crash if you played it during a combat interrupt, or maybe it was during a normal interrupt. One of the ways when you played it, I think it was combat, uh, it would crash. I fixed that. And Lamb for the Slaughter wasn't taking the destiny, even though it was checking for it. Um, I fixed that. So those are all live now in the game, uh, which is good. And oh, and I uh, fixed the exploit that was allowing people to spam click the pass interrupt only during combat, not during regular interrupts. I spent probably two hours trying to figure that out and it ended up being a <clears throat> accidental entry into a list that has been there since Invader wrote the code two years ago. Uh, so that the biggest, my, my code commit, I'll read it to you, says, Watch the wizard as he removes the biggest exploit in Doom Trooper history with a single comment. All I had to do was comment out one line and the bug went away. It was kind of amazing. So uh, that should be fixed. And yeah, various other little things that probably don't affect you. But that is our live now. And I think that is all the big stuff on my to-do list. There's a few more little things in the bug channel. So I need to be reminded of those probably. Uh, and we'll be adding more cards. Nice. Um, I, I see that you guys in Europe have finally had your daylight saving uh, switch. So now I can see that, like, Mateo is going to be, like, in a half hour, less than a half hour. So it'll be back to him streaming right after us. Um, and... So I want to go back to what Kite 80 said about um, a tutorial for each faction may be redundant. Um, uh, it would be more of, what, did you just drink my fucking coffee? Double fisting. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, I don't think it would be so much like a tutorial for each faction. It would just be a game. It's a, it's the single maybe, player game. Right, but may interject 
one or two points about each one. So there shouldn't be any redundancy. You should just be playing more games. You should just, oh, now I have a different deck. Now I have another deck. And maybe there's like one or two things that are pointed out yeah, Julie, Julie's, for each one. So we have plans for Doom Trooper to have a lot of single player stuff. Uh, but our AI needs to be drastically improved and we need all the tools in place. But the tools for single player are the same tools as events and tutor. Whoa. See, this is what happens when you... Double fist coffee. Yeah. Sorry, excuse me, guys. Um, Rude. So the tools, the tutorial is step one which leads to Faction Wars, which is step two, and Events, which is also step two. And then on top of that, we build single-player content. Um, so the Faction Wars are just the next stepping stone towards single-player. You can imagine what single-player is, is um, a, a, a themed match that may include cards you don't own, that may include um, dialogue and story elements and may have custom rules that are different from the main game like timers turned to off to lead you or down the pathway you only need 5 points to win or you start with 10 destiny points uh, all those kinds of rules can be tweaked during single player and the tools for the tutorial like popping up um, dialogue popping up a picture that has an animated gif those are all available to single player matches as well can so, I ask you something? So when you talk about single player, are we not, we would differentiate this beginning journey <clears throat> from typical single player, right? I mean, this beginning that's a trick question. Well, the beginning journey, like we just said, if you're playing Cybertronic, it's going to pop, like, there's going to be some learning. So it's not the same as single player, right? It's like a, it's like all part of the tutorial. It's like an intro. I... Maybe it's my pseudo-autistic brain, but I can't answer that question. You're asking me if a match that a single person plays alone is different from single player. And it's like, but well, no. It's because it's the beginning of their time playing Doom Trooper. We just talked about this whole tutorial system and how we're going to take them through the journey of... Let me just try to answer long, okay. and maybe it'll answer your question, because I don't understand your question. Oh, my um, God. There is a tutorial which all players will be encouraged but allowed to skip to play that will teach them how to play the game. After that, there is an optional mode, single player, called Faction Wars, which is available to the player until they complete all seven of them. And each one of those, optionally, they can never do it if they don't want but to. But if they don't do it, they wouldn't get all those base sets. They just get them in packs. And maybe they don't care. Okay. Um, but that is there for them to do to earn all those cards and then it'll be gone. Right. And then there will be a whole other section called single player right. that will have stories that players can earn and purchase and unlock. Okay, we are actually on the same page. So Faction Wars is really just there for learning. It's it's the sub tutorial. Sure. Yes. It's the part of a beginner's play journey. Yes. Okay. So we do the official tutorial, then they do Faction Wars, which holds their hand. Then it, then once they finish that and get all those base sets, it disappears from their menu. Correct. Okay. Uh, we'll probably have it hidden somewhere if they want to do it again right. for no reason. Like, you know? tutor like how you just replayed the tutorial. Right. Um, yeah, I totally derailed. Where was I before all that? Nerd stuff, probably. <sighs> Um, anyways, yeah, so the, the faction wars will be longer battles that will probably start at the beginning and go all the way through, but they'll have dialogue at various places, and in the beginning, they will probably explain things like Brotherhood Power Cards, Cybernetic Augments, any of, like, the faction-specific things will make sure that... <clears throat> I mean, that's that's the B priority of these faction wars, is to make sure players understand uh, the intricacies of said faction. And the single-player system does, in theory, allow us to, to design puzzles. The downside is that what I learned from playing Duelist uh, is that puzzles are really hard to implement, to design, in a card game. 
So, I mean, if one of you community members thinks that you could design puzzles, like here's a board and it looks like you're gonna lose and here's your hand and there's one way to win, but it's not obvious. Oh, like you're dropped into the game and yeah. already set up. And it just looks like you have no chance of winning, but if you happen to play this card, which draws this card from your deck, then you play this card with that card and it combos together, you could actually win the game. But it's That's not clear. Fun. Oh, it's really fun. But That's fine. let's imagine you have to design seven. Oh boards. my god! You have to design. Retro Masato, you're in our stream. <laughs> Hello, it's good to see you. Yeah, um, if you have to design seven of those puzzles a week, how many of those do you think you could do? It's it's hard. That's fun though. It's incredibly fun for the player. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was saying before Matano, I'm like, oh. You guys have finally had your daylight savings, so now we're back on the on the normal schedule of us streaming and then you stream um, after the fact. Um, it was weird for a couple weeks. We had like a, an extra hour in between um, our streams. Hello, Court of Bones. Good morning. Court of Bones is a good name. Uh, some two mads like Duelus had daily puzzles. Uh, had past tense. Duelus is dead, unfortunately. And so they did. Right? Oh, it's Just Courtney. Like, I switched my username. <laughs> oh, Court of Bones. I love it. Cute. Um, yeah, Duelist had puzzles, though. It was really great. And then they got rid of them uh, and did something else that was really boring, and then they shut down the game. Basically, Duelist is weird if you guys don't Justin know. Justin was, like, devastated, I, by the way, when they shut Duelist I down. I loved Duelist. Yeah. It was, it was, I remember we, we would see them at conventions, and he would, like... There, like, there's a good guys. chance that my next game after Doom Trooper, after I, you know, burn out, take a long vacation and come back, will be a card-based tactical RPG like Duelist. Because I think that is a super fun way to play. Uh, probably horror-themed, FYI. Um, that tracks. But So Duelist was made by, like, former Diablo people. And they also used HTML and JavaScript to make their game, that's which a lot of what people the don't thing know. Was that he? That's why he was fanboying over it so hard because yeah. like, not a lot of people use the code base that we do in Doom Trooper. So Duelist did what I do way before I did. I was like so excited to see that I wasn't the only one, and they made a phenomenal game. And then they were all over all the conventions, and then they stopped going to conventions. And then Bandai Namco bought their like publishing rights and went to a bunch of conventions again, and then they just shut everything down. And I was like, well, why did you get a publisher just to shut down? That doesn't, doesn't make sense. They, I'm sure they got a publisher in hopes of more happening, and then they lost control. I don't right? know. No? I reached out to them multiple times know. to try to like uh, you know compare notes on being uh, CCG made with JavaScript, but the only other one probably. No, they just fell off the face of the planet. Sucks. I don't know what happened. Um, I also wanted to note that we didn't plan this, but I realized that we're both wearing Doom Trooper. What hoodies. is the Doom Trooper stream? No, I know, but we both put on our Doom Trooper hoodies today. So mine has all of the factions on it, plus our Secret Cow level logo, and his is the cardinal stamp that was put on cards in, real life cards in tournaments. 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 Uh, so real quick, because I keep getting distracted. Um, I'm working on making some people happy with uh, Mishma. So oral, oral, uh, Aura of Mystical Resistance, the problem with these remaining key cards is they all do two things. And that's just too much. We might as well split it and make two cards out of each one. Uh, keep it simple, less confusing for the player. And the, the player base tended to agree with me. So I think Aura of Mystical Resistance is going to just be a power that adds power, power immunity. Wait, what's the me, me, me for? Is it for you want some Doom Trooper merch or is it for whatever you were just... <laughs> I think Thorgal's the one who wants Mishma to be better. Okay. Um, looks like the black border is coming through, you can see. Whoa. Yeah, there's a little visual bug. Uh, so I think Aura of Mystical Resistance is just going to add power immunity. Simple, easy. The whole, it may spend 6D uh, destiny after any art spell or cast, a blah, 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 and then it's cut off. Why have so much text on a card? So, adds power immunity, done. Does that happen every time you hover? No, wait. No, it's just the unknown cards have black borders and the... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so Kanji's Lucky Sense, the warrior has first strike and its enemy loses any first strike ability. Also, this warrior may negate any just played fate card if it spends six DP immediately after the fate card is played. So I think that card 
is going to just turn into a miscommunication. Uh, and Thorgo, correct me if I if I have these backwards to what you want. Because uh, uh, Samurais already have First Strike, so this card will be way more powerful as a 6 DP miscommunication towards Fate cards. Which means when opponent plays a Fate card, if you have this attached to your Warrior, you can activate it and cancel that card. Um, Drop First Strike, correct, he says. Yeah, but you have to pay 6 DP. Okay. Surveillance Ship is cut... Um, until the first expansion, all vehicles are cut, so that one's easy. Sworn Vengeance is going to be the last remaining Mishma card um, because I have to get into the scary interrupt code and add a new interrupt phase immediately after combat, which I have a plan. Invader thinks it'll work because uh, he wrote the interrupt timer stuff, and Sworn Vengeance will be coming in shortly. So, sorry. I know everybody, myself included, really wants this card. Uh, if you can't read it, it's play immediately after your warrior is killed in combat, the other combatant receives a wound. So let's imagine you go into a fight and you wound your opponent, but he kills you. As soon as the combat ends, you play this one, you come back from the dead, wound him again, he's dead. Get your points. Um, so you both die? Well, in that case, yeah. Okay. But basically, you get an extra wound if right. you die. You come back from the dead and, and, and kill all him. All right, all right. Uh... And then uh, nice. Yorama's Deflecting Sway. Hands. Wait, Sworn Vengeance is sweet, the original DT stuff. Yeah, Sworn Vengeance is one of my favorite cards in the whole base set. Uh, I think it's awesome. But post-combat interrupts have to be done properly. Uh, I could code it now, and it would be playable during your turn after you do combat. Like, we could add it that way, but you would not be able to play it during your opponent's turn because... Uh, you can't play cards unless it's an interrupt during his turn, and there's no interrupt after combat guaranteed. So all he would have to do is, you know, very quickly play another card or something. I don't know. Uh, he'd be able to block you from playing it by playing a certain amount of cards. So we need a dedicated place after combat where you can respond. And then um, Yorama's Deflecting Hands. While defending, discard random attachment from opposing warrior. If opponent warrior has first strike, this power has no effect. Uh... I'm tempted to just leave that card as is. I don't remember why I didn't already do this one. I feel like I coded it and then we never released it. So I'm going to see if there's a problem. But if not, I'm just going to put it in as is. It's a little complicated with the second part, but it's fine. It allows somebody to have a defense against this card. You know, you, you know, you know if you attack me without first strike, you're going to lose your guns. And that brings Mishma complete except Sworn Vengeance, which would be coming online hopefully in April. And that is, pardon my French, fucking huge. Can you imagine, after all this time, we're going to be able to say that one of the factions is done. Like, I'm super stoked. And just out of curiosity, I want to see where we are on Cybertronic. I'll buy a $20 booster when the new Mishma cards are... Well, thank you, Thargo. Um, Chemi Man is actually cut from the game. I don't know if you guys remember that, but... Uh, his photo in the in the original was just a chair. Like, he's not really a, a thing. And his abilities don't really do anything unique, so he's not in the base set anymore. As well as the cybernetic retinas and power arms are gone because they are uh, augments now. So those are done. We have Psycho Scanner. Uh, play on your attacking combatant. The attacker gains first strike until combat ends. If the defender is wounded, the combat ends. If not, the defender retaliates. Uh, that actually sounds kind of like ambush. So that's probably doable. Uh, it gets into the weird bowels of combat that can cause problems like with uh, of brainwave bomb and lifeguard armor, but that should be doable. Self-destruct programming... The warrior's base fight is multiplied by five until the end of combat. After combat, the warrior is killed. Points are earned and annihilated. No cards may save this warrior. Uh, that's probably doable, actually. The problem with that card, I think why I didn't add it, is the points are earned part. Um, but I think that's okay. I think I can handle it because what I can't do is allow you to choose destiny. Like, you're, if I use this card, you get points but you won't be able to choose destiny you're going to get promotion uh that's that's the issue so we're basically leaning towards a rule at least for the base launch of the game that the selection of whether or not you want destiny or promotion is only 
during combat. Um, if a points are earned outside of immediate combat, yeah, I, I, this one might be an exception because it's played during combat, but that's why it's tricky and that's why it hasn't been added yet is the points side. Uh, and that's it. So it looks like we can actually get Cybertronic complete in the next week or so too. Woohoo! Which is super exciting. And for fun, let's look at where are we at with Imperial. Uh, South pause vehicle base, so that's cut. Wow, Imperial's All right. actually done, except Young Guard being broken. So we almost had a complete faction until I. Young Guard was proven to be broken. All right, well, then do that, and then you'll feel really good, because then it'll be done. You'll be like, whoa. Yeah. We're actually closer on the base set than I thought for most of these factions. So that's kind of exciting. And I think since some cards have been cut, we will probably add, like, one or two cards to Imperial. We'll probably move some a general fate cards into each faction. Like, that's still going to happen. But What about Trencher? Uh, so Trencher is fortification based so cards like him and dragoon from bauhaus are going to be moved to the first expansion if warrior is inside a fortification um trencher attacks like it's not there so fortifications and vehicles are planned to be a expansion that launches a couple months after launch and will add the vehicles the fortifications a bunch of new cards and mm -hmm. you'll be able to start getting them in packs like normal or you'll be able to purchase and this is still up in the air and open for feedback but you'll be able to um pay one f fee and get all of the expansion cards if you want but then you know, obviously pay to win arguments and stuff you know we'll we'll discuss that and see how people feel about it but instead of just making people earn a bunch of packs i figured we might as well allow you to just get it all in one go so that you can increase your collection and support the project is important to note. Bauhaus should be modified. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bauhaus hasn't had like a love pass yet, and we're working on kind of balancing it a little bit, uh, bringing some stats down here and there. There's a uh, active discussion in Discord, as most of you guys know. Uh, so That's why I think Mitano knows that. He's like, but yeah. you know the drill. <laughs> so keep keep discussing it in Discord. We'll yeah. come up with it. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, will you do a quick uh, show off of this month's rewards that you have, what, like a few days to uh, get to if you haven't already? Yeah. <laughs> the uh, Im Imperial, geez, the Capital American flags are down here for the two different. Uh... So, red one is rank 20. Um, the blue one is when you hit rank 10. And then there are two card backs. Uh, rank 15 is the one with the silver border. And then rank five and above is the card back with the gold border, which is really pretty. Yep. And this completes the... the God, I love that card back. This completes the beta set that we did, uh, that our buddy Matt did. See you, Matano. So you will have had your chance to get all of the retro uh, card backs. The, 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 the logo is Sorry, the is logo. Retro. No, I, I misspoke. The um, beta, like, card backs. Not retro. These are not retro. This Because this is what I have on, right? Mishmo looks like the Correct. same here. Those are the, the current ones. Um, so these are not the older ones. These are the more... Correct. Okay, sorry. So... As I said before, the next season is going to be different. Uh, the current plan is that the next season will take 60 days. Two months. And it is a test run for possibly the first real season. Um, I don't want to get too crazy here, but the, the plan, you know, plans are the enemy of everything. But the plan is that this will effectively be season zero so for 60 days you'll get to play um a, a bigger season basically a longer season and they'll have more rewards at the end but then the following season maybe will be season one meaning we will lock the base set down 
we will we won't be version 1.0 of the client but like it'll be we'll be done with everything that we promised in the base set and the bugs will be all the bugs that we know about will be squashed and we will reset everybody at the beginning of season one the final time and everybody will start their collection officially for the final time um that's the goal final countdown. and if that happens then everybody will be able to whoa build their collection and, and start season one and we'll start doing qualifiers for some sort of tournament and we will start i mean i'll take like a couple of weeks and just sleep and then yeah we, right and then we will start you don't do that we will start development on the um expansion so that's exciting for me uh once the base set is done you know i no longer have the stress of having to add cards every week while bug fixing while balancing while everything like i no longer have to add cards because the base set is done so i then my focus is on uh balance advertising adding new content like cosmetic items and stuff and uh doing weekly events so that'll be fun um so yeah so what does that what does that give us look at my calendar here so we would start april 1st until May 31st and that would put launch of season one on June 1st so not my official announcement yet but fingers crossed um June, both, June's first June 1st launch okay I mean I heard you I don't want to we're not sticking to that I mean we're not Courtney says she surprised you guys. I, both I was upright today. just gonna comment on that. I feel fine. I, I haven't heard that that many people were affected by their first shots. Um, I don't. I feel fine. So does he. My arm though, legit pain for for a vaccination. I, I usually it's just like oh okay you know whatever. But this is like, ow like just lift, oh my God. just lifting my arm, <laughs> like hurts. Well, but uh, we feel fine. Yeah. And the the last Doom Trooper related thing I want to say today is, well, two things. One is uh, thank you to all you guys for hanging out here. Uh, whether you're hanging out on stream and you're keeping me company or you're playing the game or you're on Discord and you're contributing, like, you guys are the only reason that I make this game. Um, after all these years and all this effort and all this money I've spent, it's incredibly stressful. But... Every couple days, somebody, one of you guys will show up in Discord and just be like, thank you so much for your hard work, or I can't believe somebody brought back this game that I love, or something. I mean, you guys just say it in passing. You don't realize how impactful those little, like, nice comments are, because I might be sitting here literally pulling my hair out, stressed at how big this code is and how hard these bugs are to find, and someone will just say, like, I'm having a lot of fun with this. And I'll work for four more hours and I'll be all hyped and excited. Like, it's amazing. So uh, thank you guys for, for sticking with us. And if we do hit the June 1st launch, it's just like, it's really cool that a lot of you have been around this whole time uh, with with us. You're pretty okay, Justin. Thanks, too, man. Um, and the other thing is that even though we're a little behind on the launch of the tutorial, we are going to start buying ads next week. So it kind of lights a fire under my ass to get the tutorial out, but... We will begin small purchases um, on or around April 1st, and we're going to have Instagram ads and Facebook ads and Twitter ads targeting people who play CCGs and uh, Hearthstone Magic players, that kind of thing. Uh, and of course, Mutant Chronicles and Siege of the Citadel and all those. And we're going to see what works and what doesn't, and we're going to try to get some new eyes on the game, which we have a pretty healthy player base right now, people who are playing the game. Um, some Debbie Downers in Discord will sometimes, you know, report that it's lower than successful games. But I always respond with, we are not launched and we are not advertising. So other than like, you know, late night P uh, Pacific time, we have a steady stream of you guys who play all day long. And I watch it. I watch the numbers actually rise on an average daily game. So that, yep. to me, that is very promising. No advertising, word of mouth alone, people who love Doom Trooper, you guys are playing every day. And that's awesome. So 
once we start advertising, we're going to find more of the people that we still see every day online and in Discord who are like, oh my god, Doom Troopers coming back? I had no idea. And we're like, dude, we've been here four years. Where are you at? Well, Where are you at? The world is big, and they didn't see steam they didn't see the announcement they didn't see the kickstarter okay so. that's cute Sullivan says it's amazing when you fix a bug the same day that it's reported <laughs> that's because he sometimes he can't even like <laughs> he can't even like sleep or function if he's like oh my god this is stopping people from playing like i'll be like babe can we order dinner and he's like i need to fix this bug first i'm like okay okay steam stuck you in my discovery queue that's good and hopefully we can get back oh. into queue uh, I think with Steam we get one more Hi. chance when we do when we leave early access and we go full. I think we get another chance to push. So I'm hoping that we can get our daily player count up pretty high, and then when we switch out of early access, we can do like a, a big launch. Uh, so that'll be that'll be exciting. But it's it's exciting to think that we have a dedicated player base. We're small yet mighty. Uh, but I, we all know that there's a lot of love for Doom Trooper and Mutant Chronicles in the world, and we just have to try to find those people. And as far as I know, Julie, we're still scroll up. We're still very positive. Yeah, we're still floating at a very positive Steam score. Uh, granted, you know it's it's right on the verge of mixed sometimes because uh, early access. Because but we do have some issues that we are working on. Yeah, but to be fair, but we've I mean, we've averaged very positive like this whole time. So we are going to continue that. We're going to start trying to find all those people. We've done conventions. We've sent emails, you know, but we haven't bought a lot of ads since the Kickstarter. So we're going to start that again. We're going to try to find all those people who love, you know, Mitch Hunter and Max Steiner and they remember it from their childhood the way we remember it. And hopefully uh, for every 10 players that come in, one or two of them stick around and we see that daily average game start rising, leading right up to the first launch of the first season and the final collection and all that. And fingers crossed it's all a big party from here on out so is that a new one yeah i'm just reading this this uh not recommended review but it's interesting because some of their opinion seems to just be about like the 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 game it's not not like this version of the game oh, Doom but itself. the game itself and yeah. it's like well geez guys well, um, so anyways, <laughs> we should all go watch Matano and hang out. Yes. I appreciate you guys uh, staying with the project this long. Like I said, it's awesome. Uh, even people like Courtney, who is a personal friend, I don't think she plays Doom Trooper, <laughs> uh, but still shows up and hangs out with us, and like that means a lot. Like support of friends, you know. Like I don't, I you don't need to play the game to support me as a person, and 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 people like her specifically are appreciated because I feel supported. You know, by so many people in my life, including Doom Trooper fans. So. Oh, so you know what? Speaking of being supported, I like the mattress, Courtney. Oh yeah. Yeah, we, I, I, we, I like it. We bought a purple branded mattress yeah. off her recommendation, yeah. and uh, yeah, I sleep like a baby. I thought yeah. that the way there's like that grid, that foamy grid underneath, would be weird, but I actually, when I'm laying in bed, I'll I'll take my feet and press into it because like I like how it feels it's like interesting I don't know but yeah I think we're good I think we got it we still have our other mattress propped up against the wall we gotta take it out to the curb um it's like a honeycomb yeah um but so, anyways let's go raid yeah Matana. we're gonna go raid Matana um <laughs> I encourage you to stick around watch somebody play some Doom Trooper support uh who I believe is our number one streamer so props to Matano. yes uh <laughs> Oh, and we will be supporting our streamers very soon with free stuff, custom cosmetics, codes to give away during their chat. So if you're interested in streaming Doom Trooper live, uh, definitely join Discord and let me know. And um, yeah, so thank you guys for hanging out and look forward to some new Mishma cards in this week's update. Thanks. All right, guys, we will uh, see you around. Bye.